Grab a tissue before you see Dick Van Dyke at 95. William Shatner, born in 1931, Star Trek. Generations of Star Trek fans will remember William Shatner fondly. But did you know he dislikes watching himself on film? Fortunately for Shatner, his unmistakable voice is still in demand, with his booming tones appearing in animated flicks such as The Steam Engines of Oz and Your Last Death. While he avoids envisioning himself as Captain Kirk, he seems to have inherited some of his heroism's role. The 89-year-old, whose compassion for animals goes beyond the horses he raised, helped a Pennsylvania animal sanctuary secure the required equipment in 2019. Linda Evans, born in 1942, Dynasty. She was born in Connecticut in 1942. Linda Evans started her acting career soon, participating in the series The Big Valley. We hadn't seen her perform since The Stepsister in 1997, so her comeback in the Swan Song film of 2020 took us by surprise. Linda's most known for her roles in television programs such as Hunter and, most famously, Dynasty, which she played in from 1985 to 1989. Her most recent noteworthy news was her arrest for DUI in 2014. She's now estimated to be worth $30 million. Jimmy Lydon, born in 1923, Gunsmoke. Jimmy Lydon's family struggled to exist when his alcoholic father chose to retire during the Great Depression. During this period, he attempted to become an actor, and despite having a fake CV, he was successful. Lydon's career as an actor started in 1939, and he remained busy until his death in 1987, when he featured on St. Elsewhere. Lydon is currently 96 years old, and some of his most memorable performances include Tom Brown's School Days, Gunsmoke, and Life with Father. Christopher Plummer, born in 1929, All the Money in the World Christopher Plummer is a well-known actor. During his 40-year career, he won an Oscar at the age of 82 for his portrayal in the romantic comedy Beginners. He also became the first Canadian to win the acting Triple Crown. This isn't bad for a person best known for a supporting role as Captain Von Trapp in The Sound of Music. Plummer has received Emmys and Golden Globes, in addition to Oscars, for his parts in films such as Waterloo and The Man Who Would Be King. He appeared on Jeopardy! The Greatest of All Time in 2020. Gene Hackman, born in 1930, The French Connection. It's been nearly a decade since Gene Hackman's last film, Welcome to Mooseport, and he doesn't seem to be planning a comeback anytime soon. Having appeared in many projects every year since his television debut in 1961, the two-time Academy Award winner deserves to spend his retirement years with his wife, Betsy Arakawa. Although he has never officially announced his resignation, Hackman did provide a peek of his personal life with Empire Magazine in 2009. The Royal Tenenbaum star is reportedly spending his days fishing and painting after a doctor urged him to rest for the health of his heart. Sam Elliott, born in 1944, The Big Lebowski Sam Elliott is noted for his deep voice, hairy chest, and over-the-top machismo, which he has depicted in countless films over the course of his 50-year career. Elliott is best known as a Western movie actor, having portrayed the tough guy in films like 1976's Lifeguard and 1989's Roadhouse. Elliott starred in the 2018 film A Star is Born, for which he received a National Board of Review Award, as well as an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actor. Elliott, who has aspired to be an actor since he was just nine years old, was most recently seen in the TV series The Ranch, the conclusion of which was broadcast in January 2020. Richard Dean Anderson, born in 1950, General Hospital. Richard Dean Anderson, who was born in Minneapolis, Minnesota, aspired to be an actor but lacked the confidence to think he could. Anyone who knows him knows how it turned out. He's now a well-known actor with a net worth of $20 million. Anderson rose to prominence as Dr. Jeff Weber on General Hospital early in his career. Anderson was also engaged in some television production between 1994 and 2004 as the decades passed. Anderson is allegedly more active as a philanthropist with engagement in environmental groups such as Sea Shepherd Conservation Society, despite the fact that we haven't seen him on television in a while. Ted Lang, born in 1948, The Love Boat Ted Lang, born Theodore William Lang in Oakland, California, grew up to become a well-known American actor. Later in life, he briefly worked as a director and screenwriter. Despite having at least 75 acting credits, Lang's most famous role was that of bartender Isaac Washington on The Love Boat and its spin-offs. 
Lang is now 72 years old and is married for the second time since 2001. If you're a fan, you may look forward to his new work on Blood Pageant and WRZ, White Racist Zombies. Jerry Mathers, born in 1948, Leave it to Beaver. Jerry Mathers' parents probably didn't expect him to be a star in entertainment when they signed him up to appear in an advertisement at the age of two. He began his career as a child actor when he was six years old. He didn't become well-known until he played Theodore Beaver Cleaver in Leave it to Beaver in 1957. It was his most acclaimed part, which he subsequently recreated in 1983 for the new Leave it to Beaver. Mather's last film and television performances were in 2008 on Will to Power and Mother Goose Parade, respectively. You may keep up with his life by following his blog. Carl Weathers, born in 1948, Rocky. Carl Weathers, a professional footballer turned actor, gave his best to both disciplines. Born from a low-income household, he turned his life around by portraying in numerous sports before finding success in football and subsequently Hollywood. The 72-year-old now has a net worth of $6 million. Throughout his acting career, Weathers has portrayed a number of noteworthy parts, Apollo Creed, Chubbs Peterson, Al Dillon from the Rocky series, Happy Gilmore and Predator are a few examples. Weathers now portrays Grief Karga in the Star Wars The Mandalorian television series. Betty White, born in 1922, Fireside Chat with Esther. Betty White is a name that is consistently mentioned among the finest female performers ever. She dedicated more than seven decades of her life to the entertainment business, and she held the record for the longest career on television by a female artist. Although she didn't attend a film school, her school provided many possibilities for her to pursue her interest in performing arts. She was most recently seen on an episode of Fireside Chat with Esther before she departed our world. Mel Brooks, born in 1926, The Producers. Did you know that Mel Brooks inspired the character of Buddy Sorrell on The Dick Van Dyke Show? For as long as we can remember, his name has been synonymous with Hollywood, both as a director and an actor. Brooks gained enormous success and countless honors for his work on your show of shows, The Producers, and Young Frankenstein. Furthermore, he was one of Carl Reiner's closest friends. The two routinely visited and spent time together in their 90s. Brooks has also confined his work to voice acting with a new animated picture titled Blazing Samurai set to release. Cher, born in 1946, Dancing Queen. Sherilyn Sarkisian, better known as Cher, is dubbed the goddess of pop by media. The proper moniker for someone who has received over 140 accolades and sold over 100 million records. Cher is still quite active in her profession at the age of 75. Cher has dabbled with Hollywood since she came to prominence in 2018. She appeared in the box office success Mamma Mia! Here We Go Again, which inspired her 26th studio album, Dancing Queen. Here We Go Again tour, her sixth solo concert tour, commenced in 2018 and is now on hold due to the pandemic. Tony Bennett, born in 1926, rags to riches. After serving in the United States Army during World War II, Bennett embarked on what would become a lengthy career in the music business. At 93 years old, he received at least 19 Grammy Awards over his career. Bennett's fortune of $200 million comes as no surprise, given that he's released 57 studio albums, the most recent being Love Is Here To Stay in 2018. His work is so well known that in 2017, one of his 1953 hit songs, Rags to Riches, was featured on Land Street Karen. Daryl Hannah, born in 1960, Splash. Daryl Hannah looks stunning four decades after making her cinematic debut. Her debut film performance was in The Fury, and she since appeared in a number of films, including Splash, Steel Magnolias, and Kill Bill, for which she received multiple honors. Hannah is now 59 years old. Despite being far from retirement age, we haven't seen her on film performing anything meaningful since 2018. It was the same year she married her first husband, Neil Young. Perhaps she's taking a professional break, which isn't such a huge thing given her $20 million income. Dick Van Dyke, born in 1925, Mary Poppins. His appearance as Bert the Chimney Sweeper in Disney's Mary Poppins is just the beginning of his long career in show business. Van Dyke, as those of a certain age are aware, was a comedian. The Dick Van Dyke Show was his most famous sitcom. 
He says he portrayed Rob Petrie, a variety show writer, with Jesse Thorne in Bullseye via Maximum Fun. Van Dyke's physical comedy made such an influence on TV comedy that he was requested to teach WandaVision on Disney Plus how to make an old school sitcom. His successful job doesn't imply that he had a beautiful life. At the Kennedy Center Honors, Dick Van Dyke walked the red carpet. The then 95-year-old's exquisite attire stole the show. While carrying a cane, the Mary Poppins actor smiled and posed with other visitors. Dick brandished his cane and provided guidance throughout the event. When asked how he was doing, the actor, who surprised audiences by always having a spring in his step as he aged, stunned Roger Friedman. I'm going around the drain, he chuckled. I never imagined I'd live this long. How did I pull it off? Robert De Niro, born in 1943, The Godfather. Robert De Niro has earned half a billion dollars through his vast career in entertainment, which includes acting, producing, and directing. The Godfather was likely his most renowned picture, although it's difficult to say given that he worked on over a hundred films, many of which he produced. De Niro is due to appear in the next films The Comeback Trail and The War with Grandpa, while Artemis Fowl, a picture he produced, will be released in theaters. We don't anticipate him to retire from the big screen anytime soon, despite his 76-year-old appearance.